Well, good evening and welcome to Kids for Christ Club. I have my two helpers here, uh, Melissa and Brooke, because Hope graduated and uh, now she's a teenager. So all I have is teenagers and I have two clubbers left. And so they're going to stay in here for the rest of their natural lives in clubs. And we're going to have a great time here tonight. So we're so glad you're here. We're going to start off with a word of prayer. And then we're going to get into our pledges. Then we're going to do a song. Then we'll talk about this month's theme and get into our lesson right after that. So why don't we pray first? So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Lord, we love you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for giving us another night of clubs. And Lord, I miss each and every one of our club kids. And I miss our families and seeing them in person. But God, we ask that while we're meeting here online, uh, that you would uh, be able to work in our hearts just as you do as if we were right here in person, that you would speak to us uniquely, distinctively for your glory. And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to need everybody to stand up uh, to do our pledges. We're going to do first the American flag, then the Christian flag, and then our pledge to the Bible. And Brooke is going to hold the Bible up when we do our pledge to the Bible. So let's take our right hand. Make sure you're standing up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Right hand up. Put that on your heart, all right? And then we're going to start our pledges to the American flag, and we'll do this together. That way we're not going to leave anybody behind and nobody forgets anything, or at least nobody catches that we forgot something when we did our pledges, right? Okay, I'm talking about me, not you. All right, so let's do our pledges here. Pledge to the American flag. One, two, three, ready, begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. All right, now let's go ahead and do our Christian flag. Take that right hand again, put it on your left heart this time, same heart as of the other time because you only have one, and we're going to do our pledge to the Christian flag. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag, God, to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen and coming again, with life and liberty to all who believe. Amen. I almost messed that up. I almost did. But you saved me, okay? So, all right. Now we're going to do the Bible. Okay, we got to put that Bible up. Okay, so far up that I don't even know if it's on screen anymore. Is it even on screen? Can we see it? Good. All right. That Bible's up. Our hand is on our heart. We're going to do a pledge of allegiance to the King James Bible. On three. One, two, three. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the King James Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide his words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Amen. Okay, now we're going to do a song, all right? So this song we're going to do, The Things I Used to Do. Now, why do you think that song is titled that? Why is it The Things We Used to Do, not The Things I Still Do or Things I Do Right Now? Why do you think? Any, any idea? Um, because for... Right, because as Christians, there's things that we used to do when we weren't saved that we probably shouldn't do anymore now that we are saved. And so that's what we're going to sing about here. So you are going to help us sing with this song. We're going to sing it loud. I want you to sing it loud. And it goes like this. Ready, begin. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. There's been a great change since I've been born again. There's been a great great change change since I've been born. There's been a great great change change since I've been born. There's been a great great change change since I've been born. There's been a great change since I've been born again. Now let's talk about the things we used to say. You want to say a word that you used to say that you don't say anymore? Are you allowed to? Can you say it? Don't say it. Okay. Now we're going to take this from the top. All right. Don't say anything your mother told you to say before you know it. Um, we're going to sing the things I used to say. I don't say them anymore. I hope there's words that when you got saved, you don't say them anymore. All right. And there's new words that the Lord has replaced those with. Okay. And those words aren't like stinking. Okay. Don't use that. Okay. That's a, that's just a Christian bad word to replace another word, but I'm glad you're at least using that word to replace some of the other words, but I know you're not saying bad words there. We might want to cut that part out, but that's okay. We'll just keep rolling with this thing. All right. The things I used to say, I don't say them anymore. The things I used to say, I don't say them anymore. The things I used to say, I don't say them anymore. There's been a great change since I've been born again. 
There's been a great, great change, change since I've been born. There's been a great, great change, change since I've been born. There's been a great, great change, change since I've been born. There's been a great change since I've been born again. I slowed down and left that part hanging out there a little bit, huh? I was going to take it to the bridge. Okay, no, we'll worry. talk about that later. All right, so, all right, what do we do next? Let's see. You have anything you want to say? No. You want to sing a song? You want to do a solo? How about a duet? No. Are you done? You want to get out of here? You want to yeah. stay here the whole time? Like two gargoyles on top of a building just standing there perched by my side? No. Okay. Or angels. Well, we know. Okay, great job. Thank you, ladies. Wave bye to everybody or wave hi to everybody. You want to say hi to anybody? You want to give anybody a shout out? Talk yes. to all your peeps out there? Hello. Yes, okay. All right, good. That's a lot better than Hope did. Hi. Hi, people. Hello. Hello, humans. Okay. All right. So this month's theme is called Unique. Y-O-U, Unique, being salt and light. And you know what? The reason why we have this theme is because we think that every child of God, every believer, everyone who's had a great change since they've been born again ought to be distinct and uh, set apart for the Lord. Holy in the eyes of God. That means we can't be like everybody else if we are unique and set apart and distinct for the Lord. In fact, we even went further with our title and we called it Unique Being Salt and Light. So we ought to be salt and light in our lives. We talked about in the last few weeks, we've had Brother Doug and Brother Fabian and myself, and we've talked about being salt and light. Now, salt means to be preserved, to uh, uh, not uh, to have uh, some flavor in our lives, I think is what Brother Doug said. He talked about his three favorite, uh, three favorite things to do each day, and that was breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Then we talked about being light, and that light is the light of Christ, that Christ is that light, and he gives us the privilege of also being that light. And putting those two together, that's who we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be like a city that's set on a hill, that we're supposed to be seen, and people can see our lives, and that we shouldn't have to hide or shy away or be afraid to show that we should be able to live our lives openly for the Lord. All right, now, as we uh, uh, get into the subject, let me mention some things about clubs because we're in a little bit of unique circumstances. So I want to mention this. Um, I think the last time I, uh, I taught the club's lesson a few weeks ago, I mentioned that if you have completed any of your memory verses, projects, foundations with your projects, anything related to the clubs at any point in the year and you've caught up since we've been uh, uh, quarantined, since we've been uh, not able to meet in person, if you would have your parents uh, record that and send it to me or Miss Bonnie uh, that we have so that we can see that you actually did that work, show us your project or, uh, or uh, uh, pass off your verse, we will give you credit for at any point in any time in the year if you use that to catch up um, during this time. Uh, and then also do the uh, month of April as well for the memory verses. And and we'll give you that opportunity to do that. That way, when we start uh, tallying up uh, uh, all the awards uh, that we have uh, planned for you at the end of the year uh, award ceremony, um, we'll be able to account those for that. So this is basically a bonus time that you have. When we get into May, if you look in your books in the uh, next part of May, um, we have April right now, and the next month it's all blank. The reason why is because we actually had a month planned where you were going to catch up anyways, and we had some activities planned. We're going to change that a little bit with clubs, but we have two, three, I think maybe even four weeks in clubs left uh, in May, and we're going to do uh, some new things here um, with clubs uh, for the month of May. But between now and the end of clubs, um, we're going to let you go ahead and make up any kind of verses or keep up, uh, and I would challenge you to do that. I'm sure you've taken on new projects and done a lot of crafts and different different things and uh, different stuff because of uh, the situation we're all in with stay at home. But I wonder if you spent time memorizing God's word. I wonder if you spent time uh, looking um, at um, uh, the uh, projects that you've had and looking at finishing those projects. And so if you have projects or memory verses that you want um, to have turned in and get credit for, please send those uh, to Miss Bonnie or myself and we'll make sure you get the credit for it. And we want you to get all the credit because you've worked so hard this year. And uh, we're going to have a, uh, a great end to this year, whether uh, we can't uh, be in person or whether we uh, end up getting to be in person. Uh, looks like we're going to be doing this on, on camera and uh, uh, video from our homes and all that. So let's go ahead and have a great end of the year and let's finish strong in the Lord. Now take your Bible and go to 1 John chapter 1. 
So we talked about Matthew chapter 5 and talking about uh, salt and light. Now we're going to kind of bring this a little bit further and take a step beyond uh, salt and light into 1 John chapter 1. And the title of this message tonight for you, for us to look at, I want to title it Clear and Clean. Clear and Clean. And I'll show you what I mean by that when we look at 1 John chapter 1. So I hope you're in the New Testament. Now, John is the author of this book. So you think uh, of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, John also wrote 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. It's actually not three individual people. It's the same person. Uh, 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. Very short uh, books, but very, very important and very uh, just incredible uh, books that God gave us um, that John penned through the uh, inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So 1 John chapter 1, and we're going to look at verse 5 and start there. And it says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So first off, number one, we have a clear message from God. We have a clear message from God. What is that message? That message is Jesus saves. Real simple, real easy. There's not real, nothing, any, nothing real deep in this, but the fact that Jesus saves, that is the message. And it says, then this is a message which we have heard of him, who? Of Jesus, from God. And declare unto you that God is light. So not only are we light, but God is light. Jesus said he is the light of the world. Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, all three in one are the, are the same. And in him is no darkness at all. Now that's weird because John says, okay, here, he's given a message to all believers, that, and he's declaring it unto us, that God is light. But then he even goes a step further, just to make sure we understand, and there's nothing uh, left out there to be misunderstood, that make it very, very, very clear that not only is God light, but there is no darkness in him at all. That means he doesn't sin like we sin. He doesn't mess up like we mess up. He doesn't have uh, uh, bad days and lets himself down like we might have bad days and let ourselves down. I don't know about you, but there have been times where I haven't been all who, I'm, who I should be for the Lord, and I've let myself down. Sometimes I let myself down by letting my anger go up. Maybe I've let myself down by uh, letting my impatience go out. Uh, but uh, there's been times where I know for sure that I can't say I've been perfect, I've been holy, I've been uh, uh, exactly without sin. But I know I can say this from God's word. He's been every one of those things. He, God has never sinned. God has never done wrong. Uh, he may have been tempted, but he gave, never gave into that temptation. So we have a very clear message from God given to believers that God is light. And that light is perfect light. Everything God does is perfect. You're perfectly created in his image. Everything he has planned for you is perfect. His will for you is perfect. His plan for you is perfect. The real question is, are we in on God's plan? Do we want to be in on God's plan? Are we willing to find out what God's plan is? Do we want to know what God wants to do through us and us for us uh, with our lives? He put us here for a purpose, on purpose. At this time, I'm wondering if he has a plan for each and every one of you that he's waiting on you to get in on, to seek him out for. So we have a clear message. Now look at verse John chapter 1, verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him, Fellowship is another word for relationship. Uh, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. That means you have good company you're with. If other people are walking in the light, other people are following the Lord, other people are trying to be like Christ, you're in pretty good company. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. So looking at verse 6 and verse 7 in 1 John chapter 1, talking about uh, being clear uh, in our message in verse 5, now we're talking about our relationship should be clear. So not only, is the, uh, um, not only do we have a clear message, but now our relationship with the Lord should be clear. Well, what does that mean? What I mean by that is we ought to have a clear understanding of what is uh, needed in our relationship daily with the Lord Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be good to know where you stand with God on a day-to-day -day basis? It's not something that's hidden. It's not something that you can't understand or ever know. It's something that you should be seeking to know day in and day out. Am I in the will of God? Am I 
a follower of Jesus Christ? Am I seeking the Lord daily? Do I find him early? In fact, our relationship should be clear. We belong to Jesus. That's why we call ourselves Christians, because we're saying that uh, we not only belong to Jesus, but we're trying to be like Jesus. So our relationship should be clear. There's not mudding saying, well, I don't know if I am a Christian. I'm not sure if I am saved. I think, but I'm not sure. I can't remember. No, no, no. It should be perfectly clear. It should be clear as uh, uh, as the last thing you remember you got for your birthday or Christmas. I hope you remember that. I hope it was something special. Like for me, it would be weird if you asked me, Brother Joe, when did you get married? I'd say, ugh, I don't know. I'm not sure when I got married. Well, were you there? Yeah, I was there. Do you remember what you wore? Oof. I think I had clothes. I'm not sure. Well, do you remember who, who you married? Ugh, that's a tough one. Let me think. That would be weird if I said those things. We ought, it ought to be very clear. Big decisions in our life should be very clear in our lives. I remember the day I got saved. I remember where I was. I was in my bedroom. I came back from a church service that Sunday night um, that uh, Miss Bonnie had invited me to before we got married. Um, uh, I remember where we got married at. Uh, I remember um, when uh, our children were born. At least I remember where I was when they were born. I can't remember the exact days and times all the times so when somebody asked me on the spot. But if, if I had a birth certificate, I'd be able to tell you really easy. But uh, we should know when we belong to Jesus, when we ask Jesus to save us. Uh, we should have an idea. If you don't remember the exact time, maybe you know the day. Maybe if you don't know the time or the day, maybe you know the month. Maybe if you don't know the time or the day or the month, maybe you know the year. Maybe if you don't know the time, the day, the, uh, uh, the month, or the year, do you know where you were at? Do you know who you were with? I'm not saying that you should know every single detail and you must have that to make sure you're saved, but I, I don't think you'd have some of those details down. But if you don't and you're wondering about that, I'd rather be double sure than unsure. That's just me. I'm not trying to get you to doubt. I'm trying to make sure that you are sure. All right. So we belong to Jesus. Our relationship should be clear. We should live like Jesus as light. Again, the example is God. He says uh, this message is clear in verse five. It's declared unto us that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And that uh, we are also light. Because if we walk in the light, meaning in the, in, in the footsteps of Jesus and following him, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. That means we have a relationship, not just with the Lord, but we also have it with others. But again, if we're walking in the light, we can't also walk in darkness. We have to choose one or the other. We can't have one foot in and one foot out. We can't be sitting on the fence. We can't be lukewarm in our attitude. We need to choose a side. Everybody in this world chooses one thing or another. There's some choices in my life I know I made, okay? I know that I am never going to be a Chevy guy. I'm a Ford guy. That's how I am, and Nissan, because it's any size that really fits us comfortably in our size family. Um, but I know uh, for a fact I'm not a Star Trek guy. I've tried. I don't like it. I'm a Star Wars guy. That's how I am. I know that's, that's how I am. Uh, I know uh, for sure that um, I'm an Italian guy. I'm not, a, um, I'm, not, I'm not a Mexican guy. I have to choose one or the other. If you put a gun to head, I'm going to choose Italian food, and then I'm going to go get Mexican dessert. I know that's what I'm going to do. I know that's how I am. Um, we all have to choose a side. Uh, I know uh, uh, there's certain things in my life. I'm coffee over tea all day long, every day, all day and day. I know that's what I am. So you have to choose. Are you, a, are you walking in the light or are you walking in darkness? There's choices we all have to make. When those choices every day come, am I going to follow Jesus or am I going to follow myself? Am I going to follow the world? Am I going to follow the devil? One of the greatest tricks of the devil that I think he does is gives us a myriad of options. All right? He, choose, he says, here's a whole bunch of things. And he just throws out a whole bunch of different kind of bait, a whole bunch of different kind of lures, a whole bunch of different ways to see which one you're going to bite at. He's going to give you options of jobs one day and you're not going to know what to choose. He's going to give you options of uh, opportunities and you're not going to know what to choose. At the end of the day, when you're seeking the Lord, he's going to make it very clear what you should choose. In fact, he even says in Joshua, choose ye this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's what we chose to do. 
And so we've passed by a lot of opportunities so that we can have the opportunity and the privilege and the responsibility to serve the Lord. I hope you make those same kind of choices. I chose in my life and my job and my career, I'm going to choose the Lord no matter what. I've never gone wrong choosing the Lord with uh, my career and my professions. He's always given me opportunities. He's always taken care of me. I, I chose to go to Bible college when I could have chosen a couple different paths that in the military. I'm glad I chose Bible college. I put those things first. I didn't worry about how much money I was going to make, how much money I didn't make, how much money I wish I had, how much money I could have had. I just chose the Lord. Everything I want to do in my life is choosing the Lord. And that starts with the daily small decisions that God can be involved in if you will let him in those decisions. Now, not only do we have a clear message that God is light and in him is no darkness at all, verse 5. And not only do we have our relationship, uh, we have a, uh, our relationship should also be clear if we have a clear message. And that we belong to Jesus and we should live like Jesus. Now let's look at verse 8 and we're going to bring it home now. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, verse 8. And the truth is not in us. Verse 9. This is a great verse. A lot of people ask after they get saved, what do I do now? What happens if I sin? What's hap what happens if I do wrong? What happens to me? This is a great verse for believers. 1 John is written to believers in Christ. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And go on to verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Now, those are some amazing statements there. Verse 8, 9, and 10, and actually verse 7, it starts off, if we. That's saying you have a choice. If we, verse uh, 7. If we, verse 8. If we, verse 9. If we, verse 10. We have a choice. You have to choose today what you're going to be. Are you going to walk in light or walk in darkness? Are you going to be salt and light or are you going to be of earth in the flesh? If we say, verse 8, that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Have you ever said, I never did anything wrong? That wasn't me, but it actually was. Have you ever said, I've, I've never sinned? I've never lied. I've never stolen. I've never cheated. I never talked back. I never had a bad attitude. I never disobeyed. You're deceiving yourself. You're letting God know that you're lying, not only to him, but to yourself, to others around you. And man, we should be honest with God. We should be honest with everybody because we're Christians. Or if we're not, it starts with being honest with ourselves and saying, yeah, I am a sinner. So don't deceive yourself. If we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us, and then that's a hard place to go. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. That means if we're honest about it and we ask God, uh, uh, when we, we tell God that we own up to it and say, God, I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. I am a sinner. I did this wrong. I know that this was wrong. God, will you forgive me? He says, Absolutely. Because it says he is faithful. That means you can depend on him. He is just. That means he is holy to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us free and clear, wiped away as if you had never sinned. In fact, the Bible gives another word for it in Romans called justified. That's how he looks at it. Justified, had never sinned, free and clear. That means all your sins past, present, and future have been cleared and cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ once for all. Because after all, how many times did God send Jesus down to earth for us to pay for our sins? Once. How many times did Jesus die on the cross for our sins? Once. How many times was he buried and uh, in the grave? Once. How many times did he rise from the grave? Once. So how many times do you think you need to ask him to be saved? Once. That's right, once. It's real simple. He made it simple for people like me for people like you, for people like us, because he knows we needed it like that. So not only do we have uh, a clear message, we also have our, um, our relationship should be clear, but then lastly, our relationship should be cleansed. The truth starts with you. You have to be honest. Don't deceive yourself. Don't lie to God. Be honest about it. The truth has to start with you. You have to start with the truth. Let's own up the things. If there's something that you know you have in your heart that you need to get right, Let's get it right right now. Why wait? 
Why not get it settled right now? Ask God to forgive you. Go to your mom or dad and ask them to forgive you. And go together with God and ask to be forgiven. He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The last part is if we say that we have not sinned and we're still fighting against that, then I wonder if there's somebody out there right now fighting with that right now. There's something they did in their past or something they did in private or something they did when nobody was around, something that uh, late at night, something inside their, inside their heart that they said, uh, but they didn't say it out loud. I wonder if there's something they haven't gotten right with God about. And it's just hanging out there. And you know it's hurting that relationship with him and it's hurting your relationship with others. Oh, don't let it be like that. Get it straight right now. You can ask God to forgive you right now. And he says, if we, have not, if we say that we have not sinned and we're still fighting against that, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We're just saying that God's word has not had the effect it should have in our heart. And it's not because God's word is not working. It's because we're not working with God's word. And we want to make sure that we're allowing God's word to work in our hearts and our lives to change us continually. We want God to have a work in our heart that allows us to be able to show how great the light is that Jesus Christ uh, is the light of the world and that by him and only him we can be saved. So I hope that uh, today's uh, lesson, tonight's lesson, uh, and wrapping up this whole month of being unique, being salt and light, I hope that you've determined in your heart that you're going to choose to be the salt and light, a city that's set upon a hill, set apart from the world, set apart from the flesh, set apart for Jesus once and for all. I pray that you'll get that settled here today. Thank you so much for being with us. I miss you so much. I hope you remember the numbers that I told you, one, four, three. That means I love you. One letter for I, four letters for love, three letters for you. I love you. I miss you. I hope to see you again. And uh, please continue to uh, be strong in the Lord. Be strong for your parents. Get outside, get some air, get some exercise. Stop playing video games all the time. Uh, enjoy uh, the time you have at home, but uh, more than anything, enjoy your time in the Lord. We love you and God bless you. Have a good night.